You talk to me for two minutes. No, zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you. Guys. I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, please, what God happened? bless you. But please, leave please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Please stop calling me. You won't call the cops. Stop. I don't. Stop stalking me. Please, I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's why I moved. Leave me alone. Well, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, leave you alone. zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you. Guys. I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, please what God happened? bless you. But please leave me alone. Just... Please leave me alone. Please stop. stop following me. For ten years, I've had to live with some maniac with Huntington's disease doing that to me. Today, trying to take my car again. They called Carvana to see if they could sell it out from under me. Didn't ya? Okay, so uh duly noted for the record um he he i have to get a court order to the traffic court judge to sign to set a hearing date for the brady violation motion that i filed and i get threatened with that too if you if you go to court we're going to take your car away from you so you're in trying to impede court process aren't you that's kind of your thing isn't it impeding the court process so that's duly noted for the record as well the difference between this guy and Mr. Perry is Mr. Perry is a lot worse. Let me, you know, since your attorney's a dumb dumb, let me explain it to you. Human rights violations and human trafficking are extremely serious criminal matters, extremely serious crimes. National, international attention is being drawn to both. Human rights violations is a very serious matter. That's what opened this case to begin with. We're getting inter intel. We're getting information on your crime to build a criminal case against you, so you go to jail, and you can't do that anymore. And when you do it to me, you're caught. It's like you like getting caught. You have chosen to be in a situation that has rendered zero results at all, but for you're buying us intel. You're, you're spending a lot of money trying to cover up crime. You're chasing a lie that gets us more of the truth. And you're, you're buying us a shit ton of intel. You've had no, no date with me. There's no fucking chance a bitch like you could ever get a date with somebody like me. You're not good enough. I don't go out with peeping toms. I don't go out with grown ass men who play with dolls. I don't go out with guys who act like a, you know, fucking 10 year old little brat who found porn and can't put it down. I don't go out with men unless they make sure I don't miss a meal. And you've took it, taken everything I have. I spent six months in my car, barely eating. Barely eating. I ate about three times a week. I, I got a bath about three times a week. That is not, you know, you can't sit around and wonder why you don't have women just crawling all over you. You are repulsive. Women are turned off by guys who peep. If there were nothing else, there's that. You're a sex offender, allegedly. And if, you're, if your fucking attorney is too stupid to explain to you what's happening here and get you a nurse to help, because you're clearly not all there, uh, when you do the crime to me, you get caught. It has been that way for 10 years. The McNamara email was the first you know of. That's the first I was allowed to say anything. And it is about a false arrest and coercion. Both are criminal acts. False arrest means you went into a court of law and you lied to procure an arrest warrant. And it was illegally done. And that's what that's about. And I, and I put that out in, on October 29, 2015. The kids that were born in 2015 are getting pretty fucking close to junior high school. If your attorney is too stupid to explain to you how very serious... Human rights violations are internationally very serious repercussions. Mr. Perry, I'm telling you now, you either get it or you don't. You either get it or you don't. We say it and then we show you here's what we can do. And you don't know the half. You don't know right now what we can and can't do. You've only seen a little bit of it. When you do the crime to me, though, nothing happens but you get caught. You got caught all day again today. You guys got recorded talking about calling Carvana, trying to sell my car out from under me. You were caught before. I can't get list price for her car because it's got a bad manifold. I had a Google manifold. It's not the first car you've taken or tried to take. You're caught trying to get my car to coerce a lie and to coerce trafficking. You're caught, dumb fuck. 
wake up. We're quoting you. You're not quoting us. I have pe your people's names. You don't have not even one of mine. Not one. You don't know how information gets from you to me, but it gets to me to you to me, doesn't it? You're seeing things you've not seen before. It's different when you do it to me, but it's the same every time you do it. What planet are you on? We have. I'm gonna name your fucking people again: Lucius, Geppetto, bald fat Calvin. We know Calvin's bald and fat. Betancourt, Oscar, Sam, Renee, Beverly, Kate, Lawrence, Andrew, Richard, Dicky, Reuben, James. Who's Nesbit? You thought Nesbit and you thought Reuben and James were leaks. We heard you talking about it. So, David, how many times have you been caught before you did the crime to me and how many after? You are choosing to be in a situation in which you get caught. Every time you do the crime, in a way you've never been caught in your life before. Charles, you're choosing to be in a situation which you're rejected and caught. Rejected and caught. Rejected and caught. Day after day after day, it's the same thing. My door dashing today did not go like you planned, did it? It did not go like you planned, did it? I heard somebody say, did she tell her attorney yet what we're going to do? And you guys, one, one guy said, she doesn't have to. It just won't work. She doesn't always. Sometimes she does, sometimes she doesn't. If she doesn't, they're not worried about it. She can handle it and it won't work. And it didn't, did it? No. You don't know right now what we can and cannot do. What I'm going to tell you again is in March 2020 what he said, my guy, that you don't know his name. Right, Betancourt? You don't know his name, do you? What he said is, Cynthia's privacy is not to be invaded. You don't contact her or her family ever again. Not in any form, not directly or indirectly. You leave them the fuck alone. She's not to be broken to have to ask for help anymore, is she? Don't Get your hands out of her wallet. Get your fucking grubby, gr slime bag hands, diseased hands out of her wallet right now. No more taking her steak and giving her canned food and then saying she's going to learn not to bite the hand that feeds her. Fuck you. Wow. Wow. You you know, so they tried to use my... De Mr. Perry, I just said do not contact me again. So everybody know for the record he just did it again. So when I find out beforehand what you're going to do tomorrow, and when I quote you guys tomorrow, like I have every day for years, Charles just asked for it again. You don't contact me. You don't peep. You don't hack. Or expect to be caught. And they're going to do that every day and let you pile up your criminal excrement and just sit in it until they arrest you guys. That's why we're doing this. We're not doing it because we're bored. The plan and the goal is to put you in jail and to get a conviction and you stop hurting people. Because that's all you do all day long is sit on your asses and hurt people. And everybody's si sick and tired of it. Everybody's sick and tired of it. Normal people can't even understand why in the fuck anyone would do that. Watch the news. Crime, it was second in polling in midterms. The people want it stopped. They want it stopped. Second only to eco the economy, David. So, w when I say to you, he's not kidding. We say it, then we show you. And you laugh and you ignore it and you defy and you laugh and you ignore it and you defy the law and you defy the law enforcement enforcing the law. The goal is you're in jail. No one has gotten closer to that goal than we have. Nobody. You forget who it is you're talking to. You forget who it is you're dealing with. Nobody that you know in your entire lives has caught your crime this much. The goal is you're in jail and you will never hurt anybody again. Ever. Okay? You invade my privacy, they invade yours. They have a court order or an informant or something, and you've got a weirdo problem that you have no power and no control over. We control the flow of information we always have. The kids that were born in 2015 when the McNamara email came out, 
here's what he's going to do to me. Here's what he's trying to do to me. This heinous, e egregious, nasty, fucked up thing he's trying to do to me that disturbed the person he told so badly they told on him. We got it before he did it. Nobody's gotten closer to that goal than me. Nobody's gotten closer to that goal than the guy's helping me. I can't do this by myself. There's no way. I'm not sitting in the room with you when you're talking to Carvana. Or your, your guy, you know, that says, I'm not giving you list price. The manifold's bad. I'm like, what the fuck is a manifold? I had to Google it. Or that Mike Neely was drugged. Right? Or your little, can't we get her to take the yellow brick road? Can we not subjugate her? We've never had one with this much longevity. Charles Perry has a list of women who are victims of his crime. A list. You know what, Mr. Perry? So do we. We got a lot of lists. We got a list of the people I just named, a list of your people. We got a list of all the times you were recorded talking about taking my car and selling it out from under me, just like the 2019 uh, email says. It's not legit, but I'm going to have her car towed and sold before she figures that out. B why? And you can't figure out why you can't, don't have women just crawling all over you? What could it be? What could it be? Creepy Chucky. Then uh, we got a list of all the times you asked somebody to pull me over. We got a list, Mr. Perry, of your code words. Muffin Man, Hansel and Gretel, Rumpelstiltskin, Papa John's, Pin the Tail on the Donkey, Ratatouille, right? Those are your code words you guys use. Papa John's means make delivery of the victim to the, to the buyer, right? We got that list too, Mr. Perry. We got a list. Also. We, you like lists? We got, we got a bunch of them. We got a list of, uh, what else do we have a list of? Uh, I mean, gosh, the, it's endless. The money you owe me. We got a list of that too. I said you owe me $1,000 a day for using my body against my will for your pretend love life. You don't have a real one. There's nobody with you. You're sitting there by yourself, all scribbled up, alone, with your little doll, you know, make banging on things, right? Don't you, isn't that what you do? All by yourself, rejected and told on. Just rejected and told on every day, right? Nobody will help you. Mr. Perry feels entitled. It's my right to hurt you. It's my right to get away with it. And we all said, no, not this time, sir. Maybe you have all your life. Not this time. Everybody has a day where they've just done enough. They've just done enough. My guy said a long time ago, you give back what you took and you get the fuck out of her life and I'll ask the judge for some mercy. He doesn't have to give it to you, but I'll ask. He's changed that. Give it back. Get the fuck out. And maybe I'll show mercy. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll ask for mercy. Maybe I won't. But I'll, I promise you on the life of my kids, I will make your lives as bad as you've made hers and worse. I'll promise you that. I'll use every legal angle available to me to do that so that your, that your life is as bad as you've made hers. She did nothing to you. She left where you are. So there's no contact and no conflict. No drama, no nothing. Get some balls, act like a man. And move on. Does your little doll save you? Does it solve your problems for you? Who the fuck? What kind of fucking grown ass man plays with a doll? Name one problem that doll has solved for you. It makes it worse as far as I can see. But you're stupid. You may not be able to tell that. Human rights violations is a very serious matter. Very serious matter. When you deprive a woman of food and shelter, trying to coerce her to lie, take her car, make her destitute, coerce her to do anything, that's a human rights violation. You're in a lot of trouble. We got stuff nobody has. And you can't tell you're in a lot of trouble? Do you all have Huntington's disease? See, you take from me, they take from you. You took money from me, so we found out you have Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease causes paranoia, delusion, hallucination, psychosis, and impaired cognitive reasoning. You can't do cause and effect. When you do the crime to me, that's the cause. The effect is you get caught for 10 years every day, all day long. Cause and effect, it's not that hard. Kindergartners can figure it out. Same and different. It's different 
When you do it to me, then you're other victims. But it's the same every time you do it. We get the information before, not after. So I don't always say something. Sometimes we just pivot. We just change something, do something different, work around it. You've been going at me for 10 years. You've caused a lot of people a lot of hurt. Hurt they will never get over. And everybody's sick and tired of that. Mr. Perry, people hate your guts. Nobody invited you here. You came up here and you blew people's lives up who did nothing to you at all. You've not lost a thing. David, you've not lost a fucking thing. You're getting caught hurting other people. And you're not entitled for empathy any more than the BTK was or Jeffrey Dahmer or Ted Bundy. Are you serial killers, all of you? Huh? How many? Three or more people with a cooling off period in between. That's what the, de the FBI defines you as a serial killer. If you've killed three or more people with a cooling off period in between. How many have you killed, Charles? See, it's funny when people start acting like they know what you've done or they know about your crime. And, they, and I'm like, you don't know the half of it and get the fuck out of my face with that. You have no idea what you're talking about. Not a clue. You got to investigate. You got to investigate the guy who's doing the crime, not the victim. You have investigated me, some of you, and you still don't know me. You still don't know me at all. Mr. Perry, you don't know me. Mr. Perry types in my phone, B, I'm going to take, I'm going to get, just B. I'm going to take, I'm gonna, just come, just come. Here's the thing. If you knew me at all, you wouldn't dare. You wouldn't dare. Have you, in all these years, not one time I've gone, oh, okay, sure. You are fucking, I mean, uh, impaired, talk about impaired cognitive reasoning. So we get the information before, not after. And it's been that way every day for 10 years. And people, what kind of, what kind of mental slows do the same thing every day that gets the same results? And y'all all run around, how does she know? How does she find out? How does she know? Human rights violations are very serious crimes, David. Very, very serious crimes. You're stepping on some extremely powerful toes, David. All right, Charles? People don't give two fucks that you're sad you got caught. In fact, it pisses people off that you have the nerve. Mr. Perry, who told them? Is it your family? Is it this guy? Is it that guy? <laughs> Oh my God, you have the gall to ask me that? Really? I'll never help you. There's no fucking way I would ever help you. Everybody wants for you to be gone. Everybody's sick of you. You've caused a lot of stress. You've caused a lot of anxiety. You've caused a lot of grieving. You've caused a lot of fear. And nobody wants to feel all that. And so they want you gone because you're causing that. You're bothering people in a state where you don't live and weren't invited. You're bothering people. You're causing the loss. You're committing the crime. You're getting told on. We're quoting you, not the other way around. You can't name even one of my people, and I've named quite a few of yours. We have a list. You have a list? We've got a bunch of lists. You dumb fuck. Yellow, why don't you take the yellow? Listen, you fucking hillbilly. Women are not treated the way they were back in, you know, 18-something. Get up with the times. Get up with the times. Don't you talk about women like that again. Women are not bugs for you to exterminate. They're not. There's a bunch of them on the Supreme Court right now that I think they would find it very interesting to hear your attitudes about women being subjugated. Maybe, maybe try talking to them about it, huh? What about Megyn Kelly and Gretchen Carlson and the women involved with the Me Too movement? That was huge. It still is. Yeah, it's not, you know, Farmer and Adele over here. Get up with the times. This is inappropriate conduct, Mr. Perry. You're tormenting and you're terrorizing. We're getting information because everybody's sick and tired of watching you do that to me. Two minutes no. I don't. Stop stalking me. Please, I can't live here anymore because you're stalking me. That's why I'm here. Leave me alone. I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No. I don't. Don't stop 
stalking me. Liz, I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's no, why I'm no, here. No, no, Just talk. leave me alone. No, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, and I'll leave you alone. zero minutes. I don't what, want to ever talk to you guys. I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, please, what God happened? bless you. But what please happened? leave me alone. Just, please just, leave me alone. Please huh? stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop. I don't. Stop stalking me. Please, I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's why I'm here. Leave me alone. No, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, leave you alone. zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you guys. I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, please, what God happened? bless you. But what please happened? leave me alone. Just, just, please leave me alone. Please huh? stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop. He just contacted me again. That's twice. So when we quote you tomorrow, what did we say? You're not to contact me. You don't invade my privacy. You don't take my money. Okay? You asked for it. I don't. Stop stalking me. Please, I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's no, why I'm no, here. No. Just talk. Leave me alone. No, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, and I'll leave you alone. zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you guys. I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, please, what God happened? bless you. But please leave me alone. Just, just, please leave me alone. Please huh? stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop. I don't. Stop stalking me. Please, I can't live here. So how much more did we get? How much more intel to add to our list did we get? from March 2020 when he first said that to now. When he said give it back and get the fuck out, that was in response to Mr. Perry's threats and bribes. I'm gonna starve you until you lie. I have a house for you. Why don't you come with us? We have a house for you, we have a car, we have money. Yeah, and I'm like, oh sure. Yeah, that, I did just hear you talking to a hitman. You did try to kill me with arsenic. Hold your breath, I'll meet you out in the De Nevada desert, okay? Yeah. I'll get right on that, okay? Here anymore because you stop me. That's no, why I'm no, no. Just talk Leave me alone. No, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, and I'll leave you alone. zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you guys. I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, please what God happened? bless you, but what please happened? leave me alone. Just, just, please leave me alone. Please huh? stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop. I don't. Stop stalking me. Please, hey. I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's no, why I'm no, here. No, no, no. Just. Leave me alone. I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, and I'll leave you alone. zero minutes. I don't what, want to ever talk to you. Guys. I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. What, Please what God happened? bless you. What Please happened? Leave so, in other words, that was said in response to his threats and his bribes. Through the legal process, you're going to give it back and you're going to get the fuck out of her life. Or I'll, I, on your own, or I'm going to do it for you. Why do you think we're getting this information? We're building a case against you. You're going to jail. And then you won't hurt anybody ever again. That is the goal. Nobody you know in your entire life has gotten closer to that goal than we have. Right, Mr. Perry? Write it down. It's a list. Make a list or something of people who've gotten this close. Yeah. When you say, come, just come with me. That's it. Oh, go to the Nevada desert, Mr. Perry. Hold your breath and I'll be right there. You are off your nut. You are fucking off your nut. I don't, don't. Okay, so this is how this is what it's like talking to Mr. Perry. He, he doesn't make any sense. This guy, he just, he's contacting me again right now. So that's number three. Just during a podcast, he shouldn't even know what I'm doing right now. But for peeping and hacking, he wouldn't know. And he's not going to have an alibi from right now, eight o'clock on the eighth of June, Thursday night. He's not going to have an alibi to prove he's not doing exactly what I say. Are you? Because you are doing exactly what I say. You're sitting on your fat pervert bus. Uh, but watch me in the privacy of my home, my apartment, aren't you? Doing a podcast, thinking that this is a conversation. It's not a conversation. I'm recording a podcast. I don't even want you here. I didn't invite you here. Get the fuck off me, rapist. Stay away from me, rapist. So he's, she's telling this guy, do you like having a camera in your face like that? And, he, and he's like, you want me to go get pictures of you? I have pictures of you. Oh my gosh, Mr. Perry types the same thing in my phone. We have pictures of you in Oklahoma going to work. It's okay. I have a legitimate reason to be at my work. You have to go to work to pay your bills and eat. You're about to get charged. Like we got a list with grand, lar grand larceny with intent to coerce, interference with commerce with intent to coerce, interference with contracts with intent to coerce. You're interfering with contracts. You're interfering with the conduct, uh, the conduct of business. You're going to jail. When we quote you, that's why we're getting that shit. Calling Carvana, trying to stay on my car right out from under me. You got Huntington's disease. You take from me, they take from you. Okay? How does it feel? 
make you feel? Huh? You're filming my father and my fucking sister. How does this make oh, you Dr. feel? Oh, Dr. Wanda, put all those scratches on your arm. You want to see the scratches? Pictures? You want, I got scratches. You, I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep oh, hanging outside of there. Hit the road. Dude, I promise you, they're gonna get yours and you're gonna get I don't give a fuck. Good. You can bring whoever the fuck you want. That's okay. You're gonna you can, fight is that a fucking threat? army. You're gonna I don't give a fuck. This make you feel? Huh? You're filming my father and my fucking sister. How does this make oh, you Dr. feel? Oh, Dr. Wanda, put all those scratches on your arm. You want to see the scratches? You want, I got scratches. I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. Keep oh, hanging outside of there. Hit the road. Dude, I promise you, they're gonna get yours and you're gonna get I don't give a fuck. Good. You can bring whoever the fuck you want. That's okay. You're gonna you fight a whole fucking threat? army. You're gonna I don't give a fuck. This? Yeah, you take my privacy, they take yours. You take my money. They, they let your money that you pay for your lie, for your cover-up, buy us intel. You chase that lie, we get truth. We found that you have Huntington's disease. We have people's names, a list. Mr. Perry, you got a list? We got a cup. We got a bunch of them. We hear you guys, you know, we got to get her a bus, take that car away from her and make her destitute and get her a bus pass and tell her she can go anywhere but not New Mexico and not Vegas. If I'm quoting you say that, do you really think it's up to you, dum-dum? Do you really think that? What planet are you on? What fucking planet do you fucking live on? And you always say it behind my back, never to my face. Bunch of prissy pants. Bunch of pussies. How many men sit around and try to figure out how to make one woman fail? How many men have a little meeting and sit there and try to figure out how to make one woman fail? You're illegally using my Dasher app to try to get me to a location where you can cause a harm. And the last one didn't work out for you today, did it? And I didn't say something before because I don't always need to. Sometimes I can just, you know, ninja around your bullshit, your little pitfall that you caught, tried to cause, right? Sometimes I say something, sometimes I don't. Sometimes we don't want you to know what we know before. We have a lot of strategy and stuff that we use. We always find your weaknesses and hit you at your weaknesses. And you don't make it hard. Yeah, like that guy. You know, I'm just, we don't understand what people say. We're not all there. Mensa Queens make you feel huh? you're filming my father and my fucking sister how does this make oh, you Dr. feel Wanda, put all those scratches on your arm. You want to i got pictures of you you want me to go get them i'm a stalker the scratches you want, i got sure scratches i can show you the pictures right now no i want you to leave my family fucking alone son of a bitch wow completely missed the point she was trying to make it went right over his head it talking to mr perry is the same way exactly same way exactly so, you've been caught trafficking. You sold me to a guy in Houston who's a realtor. Name one other victim that knows they were sold before you sold them. And to who? Name one more. You got a list? You like lists? Where's the list of that? Huh? Where's the list of that? You, you know, name one other victim that has your code words. Where's that list, Mr. Perry? Huh? You like lists? Bitch. Make a list of all the times we caught you before you did it, not after. So I was either able to say something to document malicious of forethought and premeditation, or we just avoided your pitfalls. You know, sometimes we don't want to dignify you with a response. We just know what to change or what to do different, okay? You want to threaten me with taking my car if I go do something for court I'm required by law to do? Mr. Dunbar's already, you know, he's already complaining. She can't not follow procedure. Oh my God! Wow. Well, Mr. Dunbar, I'm love. I would love to follow procedure. Uh, if I can get somebody, these guys that who took my car, were trying to take my car, the night they had me pulled over, to stop trying, threatening to take my car if I go down to court and follow procedure. Okay. What do you think that does to somebody? It's called psychological torture, Mr. Perry, to do something like that to somebody. If you comply with the law, if you go to work and make money to pay your bills on time, I'm going to cause a worse loss for you, a much more catastrophic loss for you. And it's been that way every night for me for years. He just contacted me again. He just said, yes, I will. Just typed it in my other phone. He didn't do it in this one where you can see it. So everybody know for the record at 807, Mr. Perry just typed in my phone another threat. Yes, I will cause more catastrophic loss for you. He just threatened me again. 
Name one of my guys, quote, one of their meetings. We quote you every day. You need to remember who it is you're talking to. You need to, when have you been caught this much? Is your, is your attorney too stupid to understand the serious repercussions of human rights violations in this day and age? I, we realize y'all are like hillbillies. We get that. We're, ty we're tired of it. That's not an excuse anymore. Get up with the times. Watch the news sometimes. Um, keep outside of there. Stay the fuck away from my family. Stay the fuck away from my family. Your psychological torture extends from me to them. People I know, people in my life. You sit them all down. We're going to ruin her. We're going to hurt her. We're going to take everything she's got. We're going to do this and this Christmas. She, you don't call, you're not allowed to call her. You're not allowed to talk to her. She's going to sit in her car by herself. Psychological torture. You're going to talk her into doing what we want. Right? And then you go, are you sleeping? Did you tell? Do you like it? Did you tell? When you do the crime to me, princess nutbag, you better watch out. It's completely different. You have zero grasp on reality. You have no idea what I'm even saying, do you? You act like you fucking ha can't understand what's happening or anything people say to you. You're that stupid. So you have definitely impaired cognitive reasoning and definite delusion. Definite delusion. And it's getting on everybody's last nerve to have to repeat the same thing for you over and over and over and over. For 10 years, you do the same thing that gets you caught. You're choosing to be in a situation that gets you caught. You're choosing it. You're never getting a date. You've never had a date. You're pathetic. You're sitting there by yourself with a doll, watching TV, hitting things. And so get, get so can my seven-month-old granddaughter. And then you can't figure out why women aren't just crawling all over you. Oh, my God. I, I don't need, we don't even have words for that. Oh, my God. You're, you are so weird. How embarrassing. Hit the road. Dude, I promise you, you're going to get yours and you're going to get yours. That's okay. I don't care. Leave me alone. I don't want proof of this. Please leave me alone. This is how everybody else views you. Listen to the words I'm saying and understand it. People don't like you. We can get information at the snap of a finger. You make everybody uncomfortable. They don't like you. They like us. They don't like you. They're like this guy. Hey, man. Leave women the fuck alone. And they're in public. Leave everybody and everything else alone. Leave everybody alone. Charles, leave everybody else alone. When they're doing anything, you don't have the right to their attention. You don't have the right to step into their personal space. You don't have the right to them. Especially if they're making it very clear they don't want to be talked to. But even when they're not, unless a woman is giving you enthusiastic and con continuous body language and signs that she wants to talk to your ugly dumbass, then leave her the fuck alone. Find a date a different way. Okay? It's not clever. It's not cool. It's not cute. It's garbage. It's absolute garbage behavior. And you're a garbage person if you do it. I don't care if it's in public. It doesn't fucking matter. You don't have the right to her, and you need to leave her alone. And this is Bacon. You, David, are also choosing to be in a situation that has rendered no results, but you're caught. More than ever in your life, we quote you guys every day, all day long. Right, Calvin, who's bald and fat? You're choosing to be in a situation in which you get caught every day. Nothing else has happened for a decade, David, but that. Nothing. Not one thing. You know you had six years in a strip club to try to get me relaxed, to slip up as to who these guys are helping me, and you just went at me and badgered and henpecked and henpecked and henpecked and hen Yeah, and so now, and then I got better at the sting op, didn't I? Then you had another five weeks and you did the same thing. So, you know, you, you, you know, I, there's no fucking way I would help you on purpose. But even to, to get me to accidentally slip up, you had six years and five weeks, and you, you know, you're stupid. 
So you are choosing to be in a situation that is getting you caught and nothing else. And they're getting that information to put you in jail so that you will never hurt anybody again. You won't bother anybody ever again. That's all y'all do. Bother, 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 bother. It is pathetic. Get off your asses and go do something normal, okay? Then there won't be anything to tell. Everybody else is... That's okay, I don't care. Leave me. Sick and disgusted with all of you. They don't like you. They like us. That's why we get help and you don't. Jeff, guys, been raping you Leave me alone! Long. Please! Just, just talk to me for two minutes. First, let me say that I'm happy that the lady in this video is okay. Second, let me break down what rape culture is. Rape culture is the fact that that man felt that he was entitled to some of this woman's time just because he said let me talk to you for two minutes doesn't matter if it's two minutes five minutes 20 minutes if she said no no means no rape culture is the comments that she has on her video about how she should have just spoke to him or dressed differently rape culture is me taking the heat for calling out other men for their terrible behavior Rape culture is trying to explain stuff as, oh, it's just locker room talk. No, it's not locker room talk. Talk, you should talk the same way wherever you are. We all know that rape is not about sex, it's about power. So for you to force yourself on somebody, even if you're just talking to them, is disgusting, dude. That guy's been raping. That's okay, I don't... The repeat, 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 repeat. I don't... You're clothes, you're close, you look like a prostitute. Golly, did anybody ask you? I don't think anybody asked you, did they? Mind your own business. Leave me alone. I don't want fruit for this. Please Jeff leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Leave me alone. Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes and I'll leave you alone. Oh, God. Just it's too damn early for this shit. Leave me alone. How do you dress like this? What? what are, you, are you a prostitute? I'm serious. Sir, what? please what leave. That's okay. I don't care. Leave you me alone. All you want. I don't want fruit for this. Please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Leave me alone. Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes and I'll leave you alone. Oh, God. Just it's too damn early for this shit. Leave me alone. How do you dress like this? What? what are, you, are you a prostitute? I'm serious. What? Sir, please what leave. You That's okay. I don't care. Leave you me alone. All you want. I don't want fruit for this. Please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Leave me alone. Please. Just, just talk to me for two minutes and I'll leave you alone. Oh, God. Just it's too damn early for this shit. Leave me alone. How do you dress like this? What? what are, you, are you a prostitute? I'm serious. What? Sir, please what leave. You Can you not understand words? Yeah, irritating to have to repeat. Okay, this is our disclaimer. I don't know how many different ways I can say the same fucking thing. Discrimination of any kind is appalling in this day and age. Whether it be race or creed or sexual orientation or what sex you are, I'm asserting equal right to protection on application of all the fucking laws, state and federal. These guys are crossing state lines. That means section, Title 18, Section 15, 12, and 15, 13. You don't get to witness tamper. When you do it to me, you get caught. You don't get to coerce. When you do it to me, you get caught. Grand larceny with intent to coerce. Deprivation of food and shelter with intent to coerce. Interference with contracts and commerce with intent to coerce. You're in a lot of trouble. As much as we've quoted you, you have to be li living on Planet Weirdo, some way off place. In your head to not understand what those words are by now. And to not see what's happening by now. Human rights violations are extremely serious. Trafficking, very serious. Very heinous crime. Causing a woman to have no food and no shelter and no money. And can't pay her bills so that you can traffic her and make a profit. Is a very heinous, depraved, demented, sick twisted crime and everybody hates your guts they're helping us not you you can't name one of my guys you can't quote one meeting nobody will help you with that they're helping us i heard your carvana conversation today does she know i don't know she hasn't told her attorney 
But that doesn't mean anything. It doesn't watch. It doesn't mean a fucking thing. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes she'll just wiggle out, wiggle around it. Your pitfall. So my last DoorDash order did not go like you thought, right? It was a f yeah. Okay. So he was not wrong, was he? It's the same thing every day, and you're choosing to be in a situation in which you get caught every day, all day long, like never before in your lives. You're choosing that. So don't whine and complain and run again. How'd she know? How'd she find out? It's been the same way every day for a decade. Children that were born in 2015 are getting very close to junior high school, David. Can you count? You guys got lists. So do we. Bunch of them. This is my disclaimer. Okay? This right here is a video from the National Stalking Resource Center about how guys like you, sick fucks like you, who can't get a, figure out how to get women to like them, use hacking to tra track the victim or coax them somewhere, like a DoorDash app or limit income and steal their money. I'm still your steak and here's your canned food. Don't bite the hand that feeds you. Yeah, okay. Um, again, don't complain when we quote you. That's what happens. You take from me, they take from you. Okay? This right here is what police are supposed to do when they get a stalking complaint. If you watch that video, it's completely different than TPD. TPD doesn't take evidence, right? Yeah, I was told that. Here, you need this evidence. I think that this car hit and run, somebody hit and ran, my car, again, uh, I think that you need to investigate it because it's probably related to stalking and witness tampering on a murder of a cop. Right? I'm supposed to testify in a murder of a cop. And uh, she's, oh, we don't do that here. I went, what? My attorney said, you take this evidence and you look at it. You're the cops. That's what you do. No, we, that's not how we do things here. I said, today it is, and I shoved that shit under the papers under the glass and walked out. I could not believe what I just heard. Wow, I'm raised by four generations of police. I know exactly what you're supposed to do. So do they. What did they say? You don't tell the victim to leave and come back later. You get them in their room, and you get all the evidence from their phone that you can while they're there. If they have texts, get them while they're there. If they're getting poisoned, get a blood test while they're there. Right? You don't pull them over and harass them for the offender. You don't give the police report to the offender who then obstructs justice and destroys the evidence. He just, he just contacted me again, so that's the fourth time. During this podcast, Mr. Perry has contacted me after he's been repeatedly told, don't do that, I don't like it. And when you contact me, we get more because I don't like it and you're pissing off people with a lot of power. Don't contact me, don't invade my privacy, and don't take my money, and don't contact my family. Stop bothering everybody. Just stop bothering everybody. Can't you control yourself? Pathetic. So we... That's what you're supposed to do. I assert my right, my equal protection right in the applications of all state and federal laws that protect me from human trafficking and coercion and witness tampering and obstruction of justice and taking things that don't belong to you, pr procuring property on a fraud in a court and perjury. That means perjury by lying in court and perjury by concealment, David. Okay. Charles, when you contact me, we get more. 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 I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like you. Reject. You fail. I don't go out with men unless they're normal. And work hard and don't bother people. And that's all you do all day long. You don't work. You're lazy. You're fat. You're a sex offender. And you're a cop killer. And you're a serial killer, and I, and I know that. Anybody that wants to argue with me about the serial killer thing, please do it to my face. You don't know what you're talking about. You better fucking know what I know. It'll make the hair on the back of your neck stand up if you knew what I knew. It would make you throw up. A lot of people can't figure out how I put one foot in front of the other, knowing what I know. Being attacked every day, all day long like I am. It's a pretty catastrophic loss to lose your home and your car. And have some group of men trying to make one woman fail who think it's okay to subjugate women. And sell women. And starve women. And guess what? As much as you've been caught, nobody understands why you guys think that. 
As much as we have lists and shit, nobody understands why you think you're getting away with it. We don't know what, what is it you're getting away with if we always find out before that you talked with Carvana trying to sell my car out from under me. Huh? Or that you got a bus pass. Can't we make her move? Uh, fucked hard. No. It's not up to you. If I know you said that, why do you think it's up to you? Huh? Stupid? Why do you think that? No one understands why you think that. Mr. Perry always tells me, Oh, you, oh I'm sad. No one cares. No one cares. You've not lost a thing. People care how I feel after you take my privacy and you take my money and you take everything I own and you threaten my family and you th harass my family and you harass me and you threaten me and you're trying to starve me until I lie, which means I'm telling the truth now. People care about the Neelys and the Millers. They don't give two fucks about you. We're quoting you. You're not quoting us. That's the result of that. Cause effect, same, different, before, after, dumbass. Can't you, this is kindergarten shit. Get yourself a special ed teacher. I don't have the patience. I really don't. You're wasting a lot of people's time having to repeat the same fucking thing to you. Make a list, okay? You like lists? Make a list of the stuff you've already been told a hundred times. So, gender discrimination is inappropriate. Just the same as racism against an African American person. It's wrong, it's sick, it's backward, it's hillbilly. Get it away from us. Get it out of here. Watch the news. Watch the fucking news. Get up with the times. Okay? Farmer in the Dell, bunch of, I mean, I'm, 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 as you can tell, I've had to pause this a couple times to calm down. There's a lot of perjury right here, David, that we've documented that you guys went into court and boldface lied or concealed a material fact that could have changed the outcome. Right here, it's a whole list of it. You want a list? Here's a list. Here's a list of all the contacts within the form state of Oklahoma. When I'm going to work, I have a legitimate reason to be at work. You don't have a legitimate reason to be there to harass me and threaten me. Okay? Or try to murder me, David. You're caught, dude. You're caught when you do it to me. You choose to be in a situation every day that gets you caught. Right? That's your choice. You're a grown-ass man, aren't you? This is one such guy where I recorded here, and he's offering me, this is solicitation of prostitution. Where's the equal protection here, huh? They told me she takes her shoes off when she gives a lap dance, and uh, that's called prostitution. There's a, there's a law on the books, and I'm like, yeah, no, there's no money exchanged for the specific act of me taking my shoes off. My feet are covered with socks. I'm giving an air dance. I'm standing on a, on a couch giving an air dance. So, and I take my shoes off so I don't poke holes in the furniture. There's no sex. It's a fucking air dance. But what about this? See? Gender discrimination like a motherfucker. And people are pissed about it. You don't do that now. We don't do that now. We don't tolerate that now. Get up with the times. Look, listen, get richer. He'll really be nice and pay $5,000 for one night. And I'm like, I'll throw up all over him. He fucking creeps me out. I know what he's done. I know what he is. So no. Did you think I would go, oh, okay, sure. I never do. I've never done that. When you start telling me, come, go with it. I've never, uh, oh, okay, sure. I'm not stupid. Bitch, I'm the one catching your crime like nobody else has in your life. I'm not stupid. You are. I can think circles around you in my sleep. Charles, you got Huntington's disease. You're severely mentally ill and severely mentally slow. You can't even understand what people say to you half the time. So, I mean, uh, look at this bullshit this guy said to me at my work. He had no business being there. I did. Right? That's a contact in the forum state of Oklahoma if ever I've seen it. When you call a cop and ask them to pull me over, Mr. Perry, you have purposely availed yourself to the resources in a state where you don't live, giving that state jurisdiction over you. Okay? I've, there was a big old long conversation about that. 
Texas has no jurisdiction over a woman who will not go to Texas. I have not been to Texas since 2013, but for when you had me illegally detained, pretty much kidnapped. I went against my will. I spent Christmas alone in my car, not to have to go to Texas, and did not eat. And did not eat. Boy, that made people mad. You're stepping on some powerful toes when you fuck with me. And if you can't tell that by now, you really are mentally retarded. Severely. Severely. Okay, so there's that. And then we got this. Officer Neely. I'll go over that in a minute. Well, I'll do it now, I guess. Hold on. Look at this. Mr. Neely, I'm sorry, right here at the top, the medical examiner said Miller was internally decapitated, which would require the same force one would face in a car crash. His head was beaten back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, so hard his skull became detached from the rest of his body. They never gave a motive that Mike Neely would do that. There was no fight between the two of them. And why didn't Tyler Buttram, mayor of, Man of Manford, Oklahoma, and Chief Ridley, why weren't they testifying the way they said in the news media? We couldn't understand that they weren't fighting. They weren't mad at each other. They went to Pensacola for a police conference six days after they took a car vandalism report from me. They were recorded talking about the Epstein case hours before the murder. Charles Perry is exactly like Jeff Epstein except worse. Much worse. And Charles has David Robertson helping him. Right? Lucius Geppetto. Right? Aren't those your people? Calvin who's bald and fat? Who's Mr. Benton Core? What's his role? Beverly, Renee, Jane. I mean, who are these people, Charles? Who's Monique and where is she right now? You're stepping on very powerful toes when you do it to me. And you're choosing to be in a situation that gets you caught. My guy said, you will give it back and you will get the hell out of her life. You fix what you broke and you get out or I'm going to do it for you. We'll use every available means to us through the legal process to do it. She never had to lie for you, you pathetic nothing. Never did she have to lie for you. How dare you ask that? How dare you? Who is it you fucking think you are? So, when you didn't do it in 2020, what happened? There, all this, Now there's lists. List of your people, list of your code words. We found out you have Huntington's disease. You take from me, they take from you. Do you like that? How's that feel? Huh? You tried to cause me a problem today and didn't work out again, did it? No. It, a lot of times it doesn't. You take from me, they take from you. You take my privacy, you take my money, you take a relationship, you, you're gonna call, you, just, you just brought on a shit ton of something. You're not getting out. You're... You're sitting in a pile of your own criminal excrement. And everybody's like, oh my God. And you just keep shitting yourself and keep shitting yourself and keep shitting yourself. And we don't even know have words for that. So, you got a guy who, who was accused of beating his best friend to death. This was the report they took six days before. How did you, how did you know Mike had to be begged to go or coaxed? Hansel and Gretel? Hansel and Gretel is when you coax somebody to a location where you're going to do some harm to them. You use my DoorDash app. Illegal use of an electronic device, David, Charles, Calvin, Sonjay. Sonjay loves it when I say his name. Sonjay, you're on the list. Okay. They'd have people pulling up, taking pictures of me. I have a legitimate reason to be where I live or stay, right? You don't have a legitimate reason to be doing that. That's menacing. So 
this lady was writing them. Yeah, we see this all the time. She said, I've lived here 10 years. I've never seen people do that. And the, the vehicle she describes is actually a different vehicle than this one. But it was sitting there while she was writing that up. She had talked to Chief Miller. She called him three times. You need to patrol our, our parking lot because we got people pulling up, taking pictures of her. I'm scared to death. They're going to do something to her. And he goes, start getting me tags. That was right before his murder. Start getting me tags. Okay, so point out for me the marks on Mike Neely that looks like he was in a, a fight at all. Where's the injuries that look like he was in a fight at all? Much less one that's like being in a car crash. Knocked his head off his body. Mr. Perry just contacted me again. That's five times during this podcast. Mr. Perry has contacted me against my will. Don't contact me. I fucking hate it. I'll never help you. He just asked me if Mike is a leak. I don't know. Do you tell him things? He, we heard he said, you can tell when Cindy caught him. They toss my cell. Every time they come toss my cell, I go, what'd she catch this time? Is that true? Mr. Perry, no one's going to help you. Everybody hates you. Everybody's sick of you. Everybody wants you in jail. And so we don't have to deal with this anymore. You're stressing everybody out. You make people want to throw up. You're making people throw up. You've caused a lot of hurt and a lot of injury in a state where you don't live and nobody invited you. I came here, I moved twice to get away from you and never have to hear what you think again. Fuck you. I never want to hear what you have to think again. I don't care how you, what you think. I don't care how you feel. I don't care what you want. I don't care what you need. And nobody understands why you think I would. I moved two times, started all over, completely changed careers to never have to hear what you think again. Nobody invited you to Oklahoma. Get the fuck off me. Get out of my phone. Get out of my life. Get away from me, you fucking rapist. Serial killer. So, the arrest report doesn't even list injuries either. It says he has a red swollen right hand. Well, there's an IV in it. That's why it's red and swollen. It's not going to just be red and swollen. When you hit somebody so hard, their head comes off their body like they were in a car crash. Will it? You also can't do that with your ass while you're unconscious and in respiratory distress and dying. They gave Mike Neely Narcan for opioid overdose because he was dying. That's how they saved him. That was a life-saving measure. He was dying, too. Mr. Neely is a police officer. Mr. Neely took my report. He's the guy that showed up and took my report six days before you blew up his life. If you didn't do it, you would have tried to get him home. Right? That's what the reporter said. Had they done what she said in March 2020, give it back and get the fuck out. Then, had she continued to assert that they killed Chief Miller, we'd say she is wrong, if not a little nutty. They helped get Michael home. There's no reason they would do that if they killed Chief Miller. But that's not what they did. They intentionally concealed her testimony from the jury. They intentionally concealed it. And they've harassed her and harassed her and harassed her and harassed her and henpicked and henpicked and henpicked and bullied and bullied and bullied. She's broke because of them. They're trying to take her car. They got her kicked out of her home. So we know they did it. We know they did it. Why else do all that to her if she's not right? Okay, I have help. So... The only other injury was on his lip and nose where he was pulled off of Chief Miller and thrown face first into the floor after the whole thing's over. The Narcan was given to save his life because he was dying. Somebody slipped opioids in his drink and he drank it and he passed out. The fight was between Chief Miller and the killer. What'd you give him? And that's what the fight was about. There was no fight between Chief Miller and Michael Neely because, as you can see, he wasn't in a fight, was he? Much less one that the other guy ends up dead. There was no drunken brawl. You suborn perjury, Mr. Perry, Mr. Roberson, and you did it for a reason, didn't you? Yep, you guys love doing things that make you look guilty. 
So we will get home. You had an opportunity to get him home. Give it back. Get out. I'll show you mercy. At this point, that's changed. Give it back. Get out. Maybe I'll show mercy. Maybe I won't. But one thing is absolutely sure. On my kids' lives, with every legal option I have, I'll make your lives as bad as you've made hers and worse. I'll promise you that. We're quoting you every day. We have names of your people. You don't have even one name. You can't quote even one meeting. Get a grip on reality. You stepped on some powerful toes. I sent the email to the Florida State's attorney, March 2020. He didn't do it. You got the wrong guy. He was drugged. He didn't do it and not given a full tox panel. Officer Neely was given a full tox panel, I guess, at the hospital. That's a Brady violation. But the thing is, you need the blood while he's unconscious and in respiratory distress so you can see what his blood looks like that's causing him to be in that state. Once he's given Narcan, there's a chemical altering of his blood. Now we don't know what it looked like. You did the same thing to me. No blood test. Okay, there's your MO. That's your pattern. The second time you do it, we spot it. Brady violations and concealment of material facts from the deciding body. That's kind of your MO. So from now on, I mean, three or four times now, all I have to do is copy and paste my legal briefs. That's it. Same thing. I just say the same thing. Because you do the same thing. Right? It's perjury. There's my test. There's my subpoena. You got to testify. Only they made sure I didn't. I filed a motion to intervene because I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. I'm getting my testimony on the docket at least. Anybody from law enforcement from anywhere can then look at it. And they do. When you guys start calling around, is it you? Are you helping her? Please stop stopping my crime. I'll make it worth your while. Can I just be candid with you? I'm a weirdo. Can you just cover it up for me? I'll make it worth your while. How many times? What's the list of that? How many of those calls have you made? Yeah, there's a list. You like lists, don't you? So, he said that in Manfred 2. Look at the last sentence. It's not legal. It's not legit. But I will have her car towed and sold before she figures that out. When I go to court for my traffic ticket, you're going to do it then? Is that what you said to me a couple days ago? Huh? Duly noted for the record, that specific threat has been made with details. When and where. Okay? You call Carvana because you couldn't get the other guy to give you what the amount of money you wanted. You call Carvana today. They will they. See, we got that too. You take from me, we take from you. When Charles contacts me, we get more. I don't want to hear it. I don't want anything to do with you. How many times was a crime caught before you did it to me? How many after? You're choosing to be in a situation where you get caught. You're choosing that. You've chosen it every day for a decade. So, we did, this, I mean, I, we, all this is here. Anybody can look at it. A lot of these are like the medical examiner's deposition. Other people saying he was found unconscious and in, 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 in respiratory distress, given Narcan. For drug overdose, somebody slipped him a Mickey. All this stuff, anybody can look at it, right? Okay. So I do the Sherlock of it, of that case right here. He's found in a little confined space, not slumped up against a wall, in a confined space face up between the bed and the wall. Very small, too small to get a punch off. So somebody, after he was killed, pulls him back in that confined space, and then grabs Mike off the bed, throws him on top of him, with Mike's butt in Chief Miller's face. Both faces are covered. So they had some shame, and they didn't want to see their faces as I walked out of that room. Who would have shame, just a little, that they would do that, huh? Somebody they knew they let in the room. Whoever coaxed him. Yeah, okay, so when you do this stuff to me, have you ever had a victim solve a murder you committed to cover up your crime? Yeah, name one. You got a list? Yeah, we got lots of lists, Mr. Perry. The grand jury, you try to do it again. I'm going to false arrest you again to make you shut up. We're, every time you catch us, we're going to call that harassment. Every time we try to take your car. Every try, time we try to get you kicked out of your home. Huh? You're stepping on some powerful toes, Mr. Perry. I have help. 
So they they couldn't uh, get me to lie. So they tried to say get me to see a shrink to say I'm crazy. Here's what my shrink said. I saw my shrink. She was court ordered. I didn't pick her. Uh, I saw her twice a month for an hour or two sometimes, two hours. And uh, what she said is Mr. Perry escalated. Let's see? Hey, or this is her words. Hey, or something. You know, ignore. Ignore them as much as you can. But the problem is they can escalate more than you can no ignore. And that's what you've got with Charles. He'll escalate more than you can ignore. Trying to take your home, trying to take your car, trying to deprive you of food and shelter to try to make you. Yeah, that's hard to ignore. Sometimes, though, we do. We don't dignify it with a response. And she wrote this letter that I'm intelligent, articulate, and honest and focused on my legal case. And what I see is Mr. Perry's interference in my life. You're a butt in. And uh, that I'm worried for my family. That's what she says. That's after a year and a half, an hour to two hours, twice a month. Yep, okay, so that didn't work out for you, did it? But you have Huntington's disease. What's interesting is, I mean, we're, there's 40 cops after you guys all the time. Most of us are Christians. So one day, Mr. Perry has just badgered and henpecked and henpecked and henpecked all day long. And I'm like, oh, my God. So, and if I said anything, they were really going at the she's crazy angle. No, no, we're not doing that. She's just crazy. So I get out. I walk, take a walk in my uh, out of my house. I, I got to get out of my house. So I'm walking in Sepulpa, where I lived at the time. My son was going to high school there. And um, I'm just praying. I'm just like, God, I don't, what in the world is this? What do I do with it? Um, I've made a big deal at a, about the book of Job when Job goes through what he went through, but Satan had to ask permission first. He had to go in front of God and say, can I sift your guy, Job? I think he'll turn his back on you if I go at him. And God's like, yeah, no, he won't. But yeah, go at him, but don't kill him. You can't kill him. So Satan wipes out everything he has. He's got nothing now. His whole family's wiped out. Everything he owns is destroyed in, in, like, uh, in like one day. All, all lost everything. So He's questioning, what did I do to have that coming? I'm trying to live my life good. I've tried to do the right thing. What in the world led to this? And there's the whole book of that. But they're all, he's got friends that come over and they're telling him, you know, you must have sinned. And he's like, I didn't sin. I mean, I'm, I, I don't know what happened here. So everybody sins. But, but back then... They did the sacrificing of the lambs and all that crap. So he's like, I sacrificed the lambs. I followed the procedures. I don't know what the hell happened. God, at the end of Job, comes up and says, Do you control Leviathan? Do you hold the, the waves back? Do you hold the stars in the sky? No, you don't. I do. And you don't get to ask these questions, by the way. Brave up like a man, he says. You don't get to know. Okay? Just that... I don't have to answer you. I'm God. And Job's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm very sorry I questioned you. And then God ends up restoring everything he has double. He gave it back to him double. God never tells Satan, yes, you can sift my servant without the plan to bless us double, ever. That's not God. That's not God. Sometimes our blessing might be on the other side. Some of it might be here. That's fine. What difference does it make? It, he blesses us the same e either way. And I get some people don't have an understanding. Uh, some people don't have an understanding of what it's like on the other side. Um, I had something happen to me. I, don't, I can't really, ex like, I'm not going to get into details. It's not really anybody's business. But I can tell you it's better on the other side. And if you're on the other side, you don't really want to come back here. I mean, we're here, and you got to be here as long as God wants you here. And when it's your day to go, you go. That doesn't mean I'm suicidal at all. What I'm trying to say, I'm definitely not suicidal. I think there's always things to be thankful for. I'm always focused on what's good, even if there's one thing good. I'll focus on that one thing. And I always focus on the next step in the process. There's no int nothing inside of me that says suicide is an answer to anything. But, well, I, but what I will tell you is that, on the, that the, all the death threats that I've had s don't scare me. It doesn't mean I walk into a situation where somebody could murder me. I, n I don't. If I 
if Mr. Perry has some plan to kill me and I find out about it, I don't go. But I will tell you this. On the other side, it's a hell of a lot better than here. And when you've seen that, you don't question God as much. That's all I, that, I don't know how else to say it. When you've seen the other side, and you know how much better it is than here, you're not worried so much about death. You're not stupid, but you're not worried so much about it. And you understand God a little better than you did before you saw that. You understand him a lot better than you did before you saw something like that. So there is another side, and it's beautiful, and nobody's trying to hurt you. And everything you need is everywhere. It's just around you. So there's not always a struggle of trying to get what you need. There's not always a struggle of, you know, this person's trying to stomp on that person or somebody's trying to hurt you all the time. There's none of that's there. It's everybody's laughing. Everybody's having a nice time. There's no fussing. There's no drama. There's no fighting. There's nothing. And there's no lack. There's no scarcity. It's a l abundance. And everybody's f fun. Everybody's kind. Everybody's loving. And that's all I can say. I'm not going to get into a lot of details about that. That's so something that happened to me a long time ago. Okay, Mr. Perry, stop contacting me. He did it a sixth time. So six times during this podcast, Charles Perry has contacted me after I've told him, get out of my phone, don't invade my privacy, and don't contact me. I don't like it. You were billed $1,000 a day for using my body for your pretend love life, plus $2,000 a day for doing it without my consent. You do all the money. I can make an attempt to collect it like this, and I can take you to court. And I will. Once your criminal deal is done, I'm taking your ass back to court. Okay, whatever I don't collect in restitution, I'll collect there. Okay, you owe me money, and a lot of it. That doesn't even include the money you've cost me from missed work that I had to pay in no-show fines or that I didn't make because I couldn't go or that you hacked my Dasher app and jammed it up so bad all night long I make 16 bucks. Okay, he said, give back what you took, fix what you broke, and get the fuck out of her life or I'll do it for you. Okay? You do it on your own like a big boy. Maybe I'll show mercy. Maybe I won't. But I can promise you this. On the life of my kids, your life is going to be as bad as hers or worse. I'll find a way in any legal option I can exercise. I'm sitting here watching you hurt my girl, and I don't think it's cute. I'd like to kick your ass. That's a metaphor. Kick your ass with the legal process as hard as I can. And we quote you every day. You're not quoting us. We're naming your people. You don't have even one name of mine. You had six years in a strip club to get me to slip up, and you didn't. I'm sure shit not going to help you on purpose. Then you had another five weeks, and you didn't get, get, in, get it then either. You're sure shit not going to get my help on purpose. You twisted sick fuck. So, yeah, we documented that. We documented that. This was... Uh, the longer you're in my life, the more you go at me and henpeck and take my money and contact me and invade my privacy, the more we get. Longer Mike's in jail. Look at that. Can you live on that? That's for the week, 60 bucks for the week. Yeah. Can you live on that? Or uh, even 163 for the week? I, I don't know anybody that can live on that. But they'll jam up my app so bad I can't work. Or they pose a threat like today. The last dash I did, the last delivery I made, they had some... Horrible things planned there, didn't you? And it didn't work out there, did it? No, I found out. So I didn't play your little, uh, play into your little game. Your sick, twisted little game, did I? Or have her go pick up a delivery down this street, and we'll have a guy pull her over. We got a list of times you asked the cop to pull me over. Some told you no, didn't they? One of them specifically said, isn't he mentally ill? Yes. Okay, I'm a police officer. I'm not going to put my name on the bad decision of a man who's mentally ill. So I'm not going to do it. And the guy said, uh, you may not have a choice. And he said, I'm a police officer. I always have a choice. And I said, no, find somebody else. My name isn't going on a bad decision of a whack job. It's not going to happen. Find somebody else. And he wouldn't do it, would he? Okay, so there you go. Some guys are smart, Charles. Um, here's the thing. But for the bitches on your payroll, the rest of them were pretty smart. The rest of them were pretty good people, actually, also.
okay? They don't like cop killers like you little pathetics who can't get a date the normal way. They don't like you, okay? Two of them, in August 2015, came to my work and said, Mr. Perry wants us to find a way to just arrest you. And we were like, yeah, no, that's not why we became police. But that doesn't mean they won't find a pathetic little bitch that'll do it. The ones you have on your payroll now, ask them to do the same thing for free, Charles. See if they'll still help you. Is the best you can do in your career in law enforcement be the bitch of a sex weirdo? That's the best you got? That's the best you can do? What do you think the other cops think, the ones that won't do it? What do, they think, what do you think they think of you? Yeah, it's not a, they're not thinking highly of you. Sellout. A bunch of sellouts. Okay, so 244, still can't live on that. You can't live on that. Um, so I don't know what happened that they let me make a little more money this week. It might have been that they were getting caught more and they had to back off. Uh, but the, see here, that was this week. Yeah, okay. It depends on what they're wanting at the time. Um, you know, you can tell you, you. We have a forensic accountant that tracks my my money and has a list of what you owe, and every penny you've taken and every penny you've cost me. Sometimes it's just taking up my time, having to deal with some the a problem you caused. So uh, on that list, he's he's tracked that like right before something's due for court, I won't make any money. <clears throat> right? Didn't one of those guys in Manfred tell you I'm not gonna have you? inconvenience people in my town because she can't pay them because you don't want to go to court and, act and face her like men yeah a bunch of princesses okay so I mean it's just pathetic look at that this is not normal for de door dashing it's not so duly noted everybody for the record I mean you can't live on that you can't live on that they did the same thing when I was dancing they ran off my customers and they'd send their five guys in with canned food. Oh, this one. Okay. There was supposed to be... I'm going to read this one. There was supposed to be two weeks that Dunbar had to file a response and a hearing on May 16th. They had a substitute judge in who told her give it two more weeks. And if she didn't have an order, to get an order setting hearing in for them to sign the judge. He then scheduled another court date for August 16th. That's confusing at best, so she at least has until August 16th at the hearing to present this order. She doesn't have to do that now. The way that they did that didn't give her a deadline. He just said give it two weeks and then bring one in and set another date where she can bring one in. A, an order setting hearing is what he's talking about, bringing in. So Dunbar messed this up, and now he's trying to backtrack by pressuring the judge to deny her motion to dismiss. She can file a motion to reconsider and argue the confusing instructions from the substitute judge. And she was under the impression that the hearing for the Brady violation motion to dismiss was May 16th. I think everybody was under that impression. He asked Dunbar, how long do you need to file a response? He said two weeks. The judge set a hearing then for two weeks out. So that was supposed to be the hearing on the motion to dismiss on the Brady violation on my traffic ticket. Then we go in two weeks later uh, on May 16th and he wasn't there. There was a substitute judge. The substitute, I'm like, I thought we were supposed to do this today. And he said, uh, no, no hearing's been set yet. They checked everything. No, no hearing's been set yet for that. Well, but that's what this is, I thought. So... What uh, what he then did is schedule a, a date for August 16th and said get an order setting hearing. So I can't actually technically wait till August 16th and in that hearing, here's the order setting the hearing. Or I could get it in sooner, but I guess Dunbar was throwing a fit. And she can't just not follow procedure and she has to get it in, blah, blah, blah. So one's been prepared and what I said is I'll get it in sometime this week. I emailed him. Mr. Perry shouldn't know anything about it. If he didn't have anything to do with that pullover, why does he know about it? But yet I'm getting ta I'm getting him typing in my phone. If you go to court, I'm having your car taken while you're in court. So what he's threatening that. He's trying to impede the court process. So if he didn't have anything to do with the pullover, what do you care? 
what the problem is is I asked for discovery. I asked for the dash cam, the body cam, a list of times I was pulled over in a certain period of time, right around the same time that ticket I was ticketed, because it was a lot. I wasn't just pulled over once. I was pulled over and over and over and over. I mean, it was ridiculous. So there's a list. Here we go with the list again. I want the list, and I want to know the policy on duty to intervene. There's a whole other thing there I'm not going to get into right now. So I filed the motion to dismiss on Brady and concealment. Same thing we always file with Mr. Perry. It's just copy and paste. Perjury by concealment. You're trying to conceal a material fact that could change the, the decision of the uh, uh, the the outcome of the decision-making body. What the what the uh, the judge said is, Mr. Dunbar, why why is it you didn't give her the rest of the di the discovery? He wouldn't give me the list of times I was pulled over, and he wouldn't give me the policy on duty to intervene for TPD. So he only gave me the dash cam and the body cam. Seven times now Mr. Perry has contacted me again. I fucking hate it. You make me want, you make me sick at my stomach. I'll never help you, and I don't care what you think. Please make a list of times I've told you that. Over and over and over and over. When you contact me, though, we get more. When you contact me anyway, you, you know when you contact me that's going to get us more because you're pissing off my guys. You're pissing us off, and you do it anyway. Okay, you're creeping me out, Charles. You're just creepy. What's it like to be the creepy guy nobody wants? Okay, so I filed a motion to dismiss on a Brady violation. The judge says, well, first let's find out why he didn't give that to you. So I said, okay, by the way, I did email him and say, you didn't give this to me. If it was an oversight, maybe we'll just file a motion to continue so that I can review it because it wasn't in the stuff you gave me. But if not, then I'm going to have to file a motion to dismiss. And he never got back to me. So we go to court and I'm telling the judge I did give him an opportunity to explain maybe it was an oversight. He didn't get back to me. And the judge said, okay, Mr. Dunbar, why aren't you giving her this? And he said, it's not relevant. And the judge said, I need you to file a brief that explains why you think it's not relevant. How long do you need? Two weeks. Okay, so that gives you two weeks. The next hearing then will be in two weeks. May, whatever this date is, 16th. Okay, so we're expecting the brief's going to be filed, and then we have a hearing on May 16th. I go to court on May 16th, and there's a new uh, substitute judge who says, give it another two weeks. Because I said, I did not uh, do the order s setting hearing. I, I said, I'm not been to law school. I'm do okay for the most part, but I'm, I'm a little lost on when you're supposed to do an order setting hearing and when the judge just sets a hearing. I don't know. And he said, uh, I, I said, I, I know a little bit. And he goes, I know, I know you did pretty well. I read your brief. And I said, okay, thank you. But I, I'm lost on when you're supposed to prepare the order setting hearing and when the judge just sets a hearing. And he goes, give it two weeks. We can. We can set the hearing. Give it two weeks, and if there's no hearing set, then then you can file an order setting hearing. So again, yes, there was no deadline, and I do. And then he set a, another hearing date for August sixteenth or fifteenth. So now I guess Dunbar's all upset, and uh, the problem that he has is that his response had nothing to do with my case at all. I don't know what case he's looking at. I don't know what the hell happened, but he argued nothing for relevance, nothing as to why he thought what I'm asking for is not is not relevant. There's no argument about that at all, and he says you can't have a hearing on insufficient evidence. I didn't assert that. That's nowhere in my brief. My grounds that I asserted were Brady violations, not insufficient evidence. So. He, he missed the boat, and I guess he's mad. But then over the last three days, as I'm trying to get that down there, Mr. Perry's threatening to take my car when I go down there. So everybody do lean out for the record. Uh, the psychological torture that might cause me, if you go pro follow procedure, you're going to suffer a significant loss of your vehicle, just because I can. I've been saying it since 2019. It's not legit, but I'm going to have your car towed and sold before you figure that out. But I'm gonna, and it's illegal, and I'm going to do it anyway. You caught me before. 
There's a recording of me more every day. Okay, please take my car away tonight. Please take your car away tonight. Every day, he tells somebody to take my car. Every fucking day. They have wrecked it five times. They've tried to take it. I mean, it's something. I had no car for a while because he took my car. I mean, interfering with contracts and commerce with intent to coerce is a big problem for you. There's the court date. So I actually could walk in with that order setting hearing on 16th, I guess. I'll get, I'll do it before that, but yeah, okay. So, I mean, this is just their pattern. This is just their habit. See, I mean, it's, this is always, it's always something with my car. Look at that. The cops called me. My cops, my guys. At 1 o'clock in the afternoon, it took your tail light to have you pulled over. Sure shit, I went and checked and it was. So I had to change it. Chief Miller. After I talked to the two cops in August 15, 2015, I'm in August 2015, I wrote a letter to the U.S. Attorney. He got it. August 27th. Okay? It was about using law enforcement. Mr. Perry, you're purposely availing yourself to the resources of a state where you don't live, but I live. You're coming where I am. I'm not going where you are. I sat in my car by myself on Christmas, and that's what the guy said. The fact that she spent Christmas in her car by herself and would not go to Texas, she didn't even call her ex-husband and say, can you come get me for Tex for Christmas. I'll at least spend a few days in Texas with, with my kids for Christmas. She didn't even do that. She didn't even do that. She'd rather sit in a car by herself in Oklahoma than go to Texas. There's no purposeful availment then at all. There's none. She's doing her best not to go to Texas. Okay, so first they throw a brick at me on the freeway that was supposed to hit me in the head. That's murder attempt number two. And it cracks my engine in two and totaled my car. Then they did, uh, this one was the next one. There's a date on October 25th. This was my new car after they totaled that one. Wrecked it right at the wheel. And then, this is the hit and run. TPD didn't want the evidence. We don't do that here. I'm like, today it is? That's not how we do things here. Oh my God. Wow. Then you're not a cop. What are you? Because cops take evidence when a crime's reported so they can investigate it properly. You have to properly collect the evidence. Not only was I raised in four generations of police, and I know that from that. I mean, I had a police escort everywhere I went. My dad, my granddad, my great-granddad, they were all cops. My granddad was the chief of police in Roswell. His name's on the front door of the police department where he served to this day. To this day. So, now though, I'm in my fourth year of criminal justice college. So on top of that, I'm going to have that. Okay? Three years of college in criminal justice. So I know just a little bit about what cops are supposed to do. Okay? This is uh and not supposed to do we've all we've had we've had we've had uh, umpteen jillion classes on gender discrimination or racism it's inappropriate it's inappropriate we don't tolerate it now hell billy you with your little you know you know farmer in the dell act okay so this was the next one that they did that was a hit and run that bent the wheel under. I had, it, it was something to fix that one. Then they did it again, right at the wheel. What are the chances? And again, he tried to get at the wheel and he missed. This scrape here, though, was me. I backed into, uh, I backed up, and scraped the trash bin where I lived just a little bit. But this is him, back here. So he tried and he missed. He said I backed into him, and I'm like, well, but there's nothing on the back of my car. And there is a scrape on the back of yours. So how do you back into somebody's bumper, back bumper, with the side of your car? I think you're full of shit. So send me a picture of your the damage on your car, and I'll let I'll give you my insurance company information. I never heard from them again. Yep. Uh huh. That's what I was thought. Okay. This is all your sex trafficking thing we caught. When you contact me, we get more. You take from me, they take from you. I'm the only victim that has that. Before you did it, not after, right? Need to take her driver's license, take all your personal documents, get a passport, and sell your ass, which is illegal. Very egregious crime, Mark, that your client is doing human rights violations. 
Mark and Jim. Look at that. Witness statement. This is talking about what a sick little fuck Charles is. That's the McNamara email. I'm going to find a way to put her in jail and make her do what I want and subjugate and violate her human rights and civil rights, which she tried to do later. See, it says right here, false arrest. She's trying to do a false arrest. Okay, so, uh, I mean, we just, we've got sh lists, Mr. Perry. Look at all those lists. Here's the one of, uh, oh, shit, real quick. This is a list of uh, emails that are t I typed up that were your, I, I heard a recording of you guys and typed it up in an email. So these are subject lines of those emails. It's a list, see? You got a list of women who are your victims? I got this list. Here's all your people. Sonjay. Sonjay loves it when I say his name. Take the computer. Take her car. Make her go in a shelter. Try to find a way to make her fail. She's doing things we've not seen before. Your guy said when he pesters her and takes her money, we see things happen we've not seen before, and things don't go well for us. Perry's like, do it more. Do it more. Everybody, do it more. Can you do it more? Okay, just do it more. Try again. Do it again. And then we catch him again. Who stole it on me? Who leaked? Who stole it? Uh, yeah, whatever. Here's the list of all the times you called in for a pullover, sir. See, we have lists too. Look at that. Bunches of them. Bunches of them. There was some when I was out. Sensations of you calling Mays County and Rogers County telling them to pull me over. Got a list, Charles. See? This is what Lucky said. We got tired of me, him asking us to pull her over. He said she, she's harassing him. Gosh, why are you in Oklahoma where she lives and not with your family? Go home to your family. You're harassing her in Lubbock. She goes home to her family. You want to say you're being harassed? You're full of shit. You're in Oklahoma where you don't live. They can't get you to leave. And you say you're being harassed? You're full of shit. If you're really being harassed in Oklahoma where you don't live, then go home to your family in Lubbock, dumb fuck. Yeah. Stupid. You're stupid. It's embarrassing. This was when I was in jail. The first time he did the first false arrest. He's been trying to do another one. Prostitution by sock and crap. I take my shoes off to do a lap dance so I don't poke a hole in the furniture. Somebody actually said, what shoes does she wear when she's waitressing? Like, I don't know, tennis shoes or combat boots or something. Okay, get her waitressing again. They can, guys can still buy dances from her. It's just double, it costs double. So, so have somebody and see if she still takes her shoes off. And if she still takes her shoes off, then, then get her. Uh-huh, we heard that recording too. This was dated. 2018 but it was all over the jail we're gonna send her home harass the fuck out of her like work her car and stuff and get her kicked out of her home take all her money deprive her of food and shelters to make her complain about it when she complains about it we'll say she's harassing us we'll lie how many f orders are going to be vacated mr perry because of your fraud yeah God. i you know you're just you're not the brightest bulb are you it's been so easy, it's not fair, Mr. Perry. You and David. They had six years in a strip club. Okay, you have to get a police you have to get a police report. See that last sentence? You must file a complaint against the stalker with law enforcement to get a protective order for stalking. So I tried and I forgot the fucking police report, so it gets denied, number two. Right there. This was in May, two thousand fifteen. So, uh I fought they then they start threatening me with death and all this shit. I'm gonna, we're going to kill you. It's better if I do it like this. Let's pay you. You giving me arsenic and phenobarbital? Yes. Oh, this was my money that I had in my account when they were trying to frame me for a theft. They tried to say I stole money out of the drawer when I set the money up. Look at the date, February 24th. I had $4,000 in my account on the 28th. I didn't need still 200. I stopped. They said they, they, that the waitress steals money. She's a meth head. She's their drug dealer. So her name's Amanda. So she pretty much bullied me into where I, I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't want a waitress anymore and have to work with her. 
I want so I'm just dancing and I injured my knee and I've tr I've tried to go back a couple of times but Mr. Perry uh threatens me we're gonna have you arrested I can't wait to see you we're gonna have you arrested again so then would you go to work if somebody told you that your stalker told you that if your stalker's telling you that it's not legit yeah okay and he's typing in on my phone he's a hacker stalker peep and tom sex trafficker so uh what they were going to do is arrest me at work first it was pull her off the stage make an example out of her for the other girls that are uh, traffic victims and then it was, no, get her in the parking lot before she has a chance to talk to anybody. Set her, set her down, make her sign your lie affidavit, recanting her court testimony. And then ship her off to Houston guy, get the other part of the money, then kill her. They're not going to make me sign a lie and then let me live to come out later and say they made me sign a lie. I'm saying it now, though. Okay, so there's the money that was in my account. It went in my account that day. I had it. So what, what I would do is I would open the bag, from get the money out of the safe, open the bag, set it up in the registers right before we opened. And Calvin tells Amanda, I want you to take money out of that uh, register. And it, was it Calvin that said it? Take money out of that and say she stole it. So what I, what I did is I stopped putting it in the register. Here's the bag. You set it up. Well, sure as shit. Normally you count the money at the end of the night. She comes at 10 o'clock when I'm fixing to leave. Uh, there's money missing. Call Paul, get the cameras. Call Paul, get the cameras. She did that every fucking night. Call Paul, get the cameras. Call Paul, get the cameras. I'm like, shut up. Nobody in the history of this club has ever done that. Nobody. You're the only one. You need to, you need to get out of your daycare, whatever. Uh, I, this is a professional business. Stop acting like that. So she... I'm like, she's like, you stole money. And I looked at her and I go, no, I did not steal money. I haven't even handled the money. I put the bag from the safe on the counter. You set it up. Oh, why are we counting money at 10 o'clock at night? Right before I'm going to leave. So she runs back, comes back to me. She goes, oh, the DJ had it. Oh, did he? Oh, okay. Here's the thing. We heard y'all talking about that. So I stopped opening the bag and setting it up. Yeah, we get it before you do it. You take from me, they take from you. Any other victim can say that, Calvin? Then there's this conversation. I'm like, I'm not White Earp. I didn't come into this town to mop up. Whatever the corruption bullshit is that you're trying to, you know, the cops are corrupt. They all work for us, do they? Okay, I don't care. It's not my problem. Get that shit out of my face. I'm not White Earp. I didn't come in here to clean up. What I did is I came here to be with my family and be left alone. So why are you bothering me? Why are you trying to murder me? Yeah, I was getting sick. I had to buy uh, charcoal just to go to work. They were putting shit in my drinks. Okay, so I'm having this big old long thing. Now, I said I'm not giving him another court venue to corrupt up. What happened is they were trying to bait me out into filing the police report so that I would do what I did and they could do what they did with a false arrest. Right? But at the time I did, I'm trying to I'm trying to make them think I'm not going to do it. That's why I told them this. So we're having that argument. They had it planned and I'm like you guys are putting poison in my food and drinks. You at Lady Godiva's you eat and drink. They have, they have actually have a kitchen there. Um, we talked about Fabian. Hold on. Fabian was the guy I wanted to date. Perry bought into. My guys get that to me in jail. You like looking? Look at that. Huh? Any other victim have something like that? They got that to me in jail. It wasn't up to you, was it? No, it was not. You're the butt in, see? Interestingly, the butt in has the angle of these two words in such a way that they intersect. Hope and Fabian. Not just any words, those words. His name. Not just any name, Fabian's name. Right? They're not just in the same book. They're not just on the same page. They intersect. Because you make them intersect. Yeah, you're butting in. You cause people to be sad. You cause people to be scared. Boo is a private joke between my one of the cops and I, my friend. The ones that get pissed off every time you hurt me. Uh-huh. Okay. 
If those two words were parallel, they wouldn't intersect. It takes the butting in to make the words intersect. Yeah, what you do for evil will you be used for our good, bitch. What's that say? I want for him to leave me alone. The rest of this was about Fabian, not part of Mr. Perry's legislative duties to butt in to a dating relationship that doesn't concern him and is none of his business. He's a happily married family guy, Jacqueline Perry. Where's she when you're butting into my life? Huh? Who is Sam? Somebody said Sam and Jacqueline were arguing. What were they arguing about, Charles? Yeah, okay. Where's your kids? Go home to your family. When you, you've, choose, you've chosen to be in a situation where you're just getting caught. See? We've got one in, oh, in Tulsa. We've got to get her to Texas so we can hurt her more. Look at that right there. Recorded. You take from me, they take from you. Okay, so I did the thing you have to do. It's the law. 121 2016, I fill out my police report. Okay? I'm waiting to hear back from the cops to get a blood test. It's a lot stronger if I can go to court and say, Your Honor, I have a blood test that shows positive for arsenic poisoning. I need a fucking protective order. Don't you think? Okay, well, I'm waiting for the call back. I get arrested and charged in Lubbock for filing a false police report. No evidence collected, mind you, in retaliation for Mr. Perry doing his job as a public servant, as a senator. Wow, I want planet, sir. But didn't they say in Manford, you know how many times I've pulled up behind a house of a woman who's not my wife and watched her in the backyard? Never, because it's weirdo. And not what you do to pass a law in Texas. You know how many times I've told a woman, uh, you're stuck, you don't have any control? Never. It's weirdo. It's weirdo. And not what you do to pass a law in Texas. You know how many times I've told a woman, let your life fade away? Never. It's weirdo. And not what you do to pass a law in Texas. You know how many times I've sent somebody to spy on my wife when she's hanging out with her friends at a restaurant or gone myself? <coughs> or even my wife? Never. It's weirdo. And not what you do to pass a law in Texas. So our shrink says Mr. Perry is unable to identify his legislative duties or what state he legislates in. I don't live in Texas. I live in Oklahoma. You don't legislate in Oklahoma. You don't live here. Nobody invited you here, sir. Yeah. Okay. So but we got Pintos coming into my work. Also, not what you do to pass a law in Texas. So they don't call me back until the 15th. I'm already in jail. Right? And the, and the charges were dismissed. Because clearly that was a, a legal detainment, wasn't it? But I had two months I sat in jail while you let that arsenic work its way out of my system and I suffered the degradation of my evidence. Me and Mike Neely had the same thing happen, didn't we? You also concealed from this court that uh, you have to file a police report and no evidence had been collected yet. You didn't tell Hanson that, did you? Nope. You have a big thing and a big problem with concealment of material fact before the deciding body. You just contacted me again. I told you to fuck off, didn't I? Act like you understand me. When you contact me, we always get more. Because I fucking hate it. Act like you understand what I'm saying, bitch. You sicko. You're a sicko. So... Uh... If you watch Connecting the Dots, you'll see TPD did not do what you're supposed to do as a cop when you get a stalking report. They didn't do it. After that, Lucky ends up murdered, and Mike is almost dead, framed Mike. And TPD doesn't give a fuck. Now, what do you think what I feel coming from four generations of police, and I keep getting pulled over by that same police department? Yeah, that's a problem. Don't you think? I have help. My help is powerful. And that's all I'm going to say. They don't think it's cute when men pick on women. They don't think it's cute when you violate human rights and civil rights. They don't think it's cute when you're a cop and you're helping the bad guy and not the good guy. Or one officer down in need of an assist. We don't leave one behind. I don't know what you do. We don't leave one behind. So, nobody's beat the drum for Mike Neely more than me. 
no matter what the cost. Nobody has beat the drum more than me. Nobody caught the shit they did but me. We did. Y'all didn't. Don't forget that. What I said to y'all is I'm not going to sue you. I'm going to outcop you. Watch me. Charles just contacted me again. That's nine times during this podcast. You sick, twisted little fuck. Don't contact me. I don't like it. I don't care what you think. No one understands why you think I would. I'm never going to help you. No one understands why you think I would help a guy who's ruining my life. I'm helping the guys that are fixing to put you in jail. And you won't be able to hurt me again. Fuck off. Fuck the hell off. So, uh, I didn't sue Tulsa police. I'm going to outcop them. That's just, that's my choice. That's my decision. Okay? You're the one that needs to lie. This is, this is your secret, not mine. It's not my problem, it's your problem. But when you do it to me, you get caught. It gets, there's no secret. You're chasing a lie. The more you chase your lie, the more truth comes out. You're sitting in a pile of criminal excrement. You smell bad, too. All of you do. Okay, this was the first time you tried, tried to perpetrate a fraud on the court with your harassment bullshit. We'll send her home, harass the hell out of her, deprive her of food and shelter. And uh, when she talks about it, we'll say she's harassing us. Judge Kirkendall said, I need you to leave her alone for two weeks so that I can rule out entrapment and provocation. And you go, let's do it more. Let's do it more. Everybody, let's do it more. I'm stupid. So here's what happened. Well, before I do that next one, look at this. This, is in, this was before my false arrest. I got a heads up on his plan. Try to slip something in my drink. And he, this was his plan right here. Okay. The cops helping me at the time, I couldn't say that there was a police investigation ongoing. I couldn't say it until after I got back and they were like, we didn't want him to know there even was a police investigation. But since we keep, he keeps talking about murdering you, we have to, he has to know that we're here. Just don't tell him who we are. Right here. Look at this. This was before my false arrest. I don't text Dave. Not now. Let your life fade away. This one. You know how many times I've told a woman who is not my wife or my wife, let your life fade away? Never. It's weirdo. And not what you do to pass law in Texas. David had no reason they want me dead. I just met him. But for his relationship with Charles Perry. Yeah. Okay. Those texts of Fabian were sent the first night David came in and introduced himself to me. Where are they? I'm telling Fabian of my conversation with David. David said, you're going to recant your claims that Charles is a stalker, or I'm going to put you in the lake. Yep. Okay, so I documented the conversation with Fabian on the night that he came in. It's October 12th. It's like a Sunday night, I want to say. Charles, when you contact me, now that's ten times. When you contact me, we get more because I fucking hate it. Stop contacting me. Stop. Let's get her family to coerce her. Let's get her family to coerce her. How many times did you tell Craig and Corky that you needed them to try to talk me into being trafficked and murdered? Only you put it on different. You you lied to them, didn't you? There was You forged my name to a marriage license so that you could get my financial information that would otherwise be protected under privacy law? It's a forgery. It's still illegal for you to get that information, and you can't use that, sir, or a passport. You wanted to get a passport. We heard you talking about that. Using forged documents. So somebody was questioning it. I don't think she consented to this marriage license. Lucky asked me about it. And I was like, oh, fuck no, Lucky. Okay, so he came out to my club. He and Mike did. And uh, he asked me about that. Why did he drive all the way to Inola, Oklahoma to ask me that question when I live two minutes from the police department in Manford? Why did he feel like he needed to do that? Creepy Chucky. You're creeping me out. There's a reason you're by yourself. Sir, stop creeping me out. So he had, uh, he, 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 uh, the, somebody said, well, where's the wedding pictures? So now, four years after the fact, <clears throat> four years after he forged my name against my will, I've still to this day not seen it. I'm, uh, whoever thinks I signed that, show me your copy, watch him shit himself. 
he's trying to force me to take wedding photos. So they were going to do the false arrest, make me do fa wedding photos. Make me. I will beat you the fuck up first. You get near me, I will beat the hell out of you. The, you know, he's like, we have a surprise for you. Yes, so do I. It would surprise you how fast your balls will end up in your brain if you get anywhere near me. There will be no wedding. There will be no wedding photos. You are sick. You're fucked up and you're sick. There's not even been a date in 13 years. There will never be a, even a date. You're rejected. You're a stalker. You're raping me. You're forcing yourself on everybody. Somebody complained about it. It was a guy that said this. Again, I apologize for the vulgarity. I'm quoting somebody else. But the guy was this mad. It, if you could hear the tone in his, he was this mad. And if I don't say it like he said it, you won't get the full anger and animosity he was feeling. He said, that floppy dick bitch is raping everybody, not just her. I know, I know that she said she feels like he's raping her. He's not just raping her. He's raping everybody. He's wiping that floppy dick all over everyone. And I'm sick and tired of it. I can see why he has leaks. If I knew how to, who to leak to, I'd leak to. If I knew who, who the people are to leak to, I'd also leak. I'm sick of him. We're all sick of him. He's raping everybody. He's forcing himself on everybody. And we're tired of it. We're tired of it. And that's how we get stuff like this right here. And the McNamara email. And the conversation with Carvana. Okay? When you contact me, we get more. It's rape. When you contact me, we get more. It's rape. When you invade my privacy, it's rape. When you invade my privacy, it's rape. You're a rapist. You're a sex offender. You're about to go to jail. Human rights violations are very serious. You don't get to watch me in the privacy of my home and get away with it. Not this time. We get in this stuff right here, you bitch, dum dum, because everybody's sick of you. It is rape. So that it was a male. It was a man who said that. He's wiping his floppy dick all over everybody, not just her. He's raping all of us, not just her. And I'm sick of it. We're all sick of it. That's why I can get information at the snap of a finger. And nobody will tell you shit. So there, then there's what, this one. What I said to Perry, if you take my home from me, Things will get very bad for you. But you do what you do. Because there are a couple of people involved in this that when you cause loss for me, like that bad, they start delivering like a motherfucker with intel. So, this is dated 2009-2021. And then they tried it. She called me about smoking. This says... We can't take her money and get her kicked out for non-payment because it's COVID moratorium. So let's try smoking. This is dated the 15th a few days later. She did try. That's about smoking. Okay, so after that is when we got Blankenship, Desiree, Calvin, who's bald and fat. Then you did it out of my hotel. You did it again. You cause a loss for me. You take from me. They take from you. That's when we get Lucius, Geppetto, Sonjay. Beverly, Renee, Kate, James, Reuben, Andrew, Lawrence, Richard, Dickie. Okay? You take from me, they take from you. Okay? He said, you will give back what you took. She doesn't want your bribe. She said no. She's not going to lie for you. At no time did she have to lie for you. So you want to starve her until she lies? Wow. It'll go on the list. Duly noted, it goes on the list. Remember, the intent is to put you in jail and use all that to get a conviction. And the more we get these, it will be to get that conviction, don't you think? Dumb, dumb. Huh? Don't you think? So, you're not all there, are you? Do you even understand what I'm saying? We think you don't. Your, your reaction is always a fail. It's always like you have no fucking idea what I just said. When you contact me, we get more. When you invade my privacy, we get more. When you take from me, we get more. 
right? He said her privacy is not to be invaded anymore. You don't contact her or her family in any form. You're creepy. Some of the stuff that you do is very creepy and very embarrassing. And no normal person could think that shit up if they had to. It's very embarrassing. It's gross. You're gross. And she's not to be broken, have to ask for help again. Period. Just like that. It's not up to you. It's up to me. I'm the one quoting you. You're not quoting me. You don't have our names. We have yours. Get a grip on reality. It's been that way every day for 10 years. Not a day, not a week, not a month. 10 years. A decade. You have wasted away your life, given us intel. Wow. It's pretty fucking pathetic. So, give back what you took and get the fuck out of her life. Or, I will do it for you through the legal process. There's not going to be a bribe. There's not, You starve her until she lies, then we'll charge you with coercion. Okay? She doesn't have to lie. How dare you ask? How dare you even fucking ask? You got a lot of nerve. When you do that, though, and when you play the victim, all of a sudden we get more intel because that pisses people off. It's funny as hell. A lot of the stuff you do backfires on you. So, he said, you give it back on your own and you get the hell out on your own. Maybe I'll show you some mercy. Maybe I won't. There was a day that I said, I'll show you some mercy. That day's done. You had your chance and you fucked it up. Maybe I'll show it. Maybe I won't. But for sure, however bad you make her life, I will use every legal option available to me to make your life as bad or worse. Okay? Write that down on your list. Got it? Write it down on your list. You take from me, they take from you. Now, a lot of this stuff I've said has already been said over and over and over and over. The reason we have to repeat is because Mr. Perry likes to convene a grand jury. And then when he, you know, I do a podcast and the jury, the grand jury or the media, they're worried about somebody seeing it. And I've said it. If I d leave something out that might be pertinent, you know, like they like to do conceal material facts that might change the outcome of the deciding body. Maybe she won't mention it this time. Then we'll convene the grand jury and then do, then do it. Yeah, we've heard you have that conversation too more than once. It's on our list, Charles. It's on our list. Peek and, peep and poke. Your guy. His guy calls him peep and poke and pink penny pathetic Perry. Your guy calls you that. It's He's not wrong. You sit by yourself all old and shriveled up. Rocking back and forth. Watching TV with your doll. Hitting things. Which my seven-month-old granddaughter can do exactly the same thing. No skill set required for that at all. And you want to be an elected official? Somebody said that. When I talked to Charles Perry, there's never been a time that it wasn't like talking to a 10-year-old little bratty kid who found some porn and you can't tear him away from it. Never is it like talking to a grown man and for sure not like to talking to a girl, uh, an elected official. It's always like talking to a bratty little kid who's about 10 years old and you can't get him to put the porn down and go to school. Go work. Go do something productive and quit bothering. Leave everybody and everything alone. The more you contact me, the more we get because I don't like it. The more you contact me, the more we get because I don't like it. We always get it before. The more you contact me, the more we get because I don't like it. The more you contact me, the more we get because I don't like it. It has been that way for 10 years, every day, all day long. When you contact me, I fucking hate it. So we get more. When you bother me, we get more. You're choosing to be in a situation that you're caught more than ever in your life no other victim knew they were trafficked beforehand and i do and to who when you contact me it bothers me i don't like it so we get more when you contact me when you threaten me when you got to tell me what you think and how you feel we get more you don't get a date you don't get information you get caught and yet you do the same thing every day they get you that wow dumb dumb everybody fucking hates you fucking hate you Everybody's fucking sick and tired of you. Why can't you get that? Please, I can't live here anymore because you stopped me. That's no, why no, I'm here. No, just leave me alone. I will. You talked to me for two minutes. No, zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you.
Whatever. Does everyone want to hear your voice? See you. What, please, what God happened? bless you, but what please happened? leave me alone. Please, please, please leave me alone. Please huh? stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop. I don't. Stop stalking me. Please. Hey, I can't stop. live here anymore because you stalked me. That's no, why I'm no, here. No, no, no. Just talk. leave me alone. Well, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No. Or you leave me alone. Zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you. What happens? Everyone want to hear your voice? See you. Please stop bless you, but please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Please huh? stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop. I don't. About stop stalking me. Please. Hey. I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's no, why I'm no, here. No, no. Just talk leave to me. me alone. Well, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No. Leave me alone. Zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you. What I happens? don't want to hear your voice. See you. What, please what God happened? bless you. But what please happened? leave me alone. Just... Please leave me alone. Please huh? stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop. I don't. Stop stalking me. Please. I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's why I'm here. Leave me alone. Well, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, leave you alone. zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you. What I happens? don't want to hear your voice. See you. What, please what God happened? bless you, but what please happened? leave me alone. What's please that? leave me alone. Please huh? stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop. I don't. Stop that. stalking me. Please. Hey. I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That's no, why I'm no, here. No, no. Just leave me, me alone. Well, I will. You talk to me for two minutes. No, leave you alone. zero minutes. I don't want to ever talk to you. What I don't ever want to hear your voice. See you. Please God bless you, but please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Please huh? stop following me. You won't call the cops. Stop. I don't. Stop that. stalking me. Please. Hey. I can't live here anymore because you stalked me. That